bitches i'm reliably informed that i'm terrible at pimping my stuff so here i am pimping my stuff in what's hopefully an amusing way if you want to interact with me and follow me you can find me on twitter at grimasaur and at mort underscore post for official announcements hello lovelies today we're looking at golden sky stories heartwarming role-playing um I have a sore throat and a bit of a cough, so you'll have to excuse me if I keep pausing, but I've been trying to do takes and it's just not working without me <laughs> coughing. So, uh, unfortunately, there you go. Hopefully it's not the dreaded Rona. Um, <sighs> heartwarming role-playing. Is this a role-playing game? Yeah, this is a contentious question. What makes a role-playing game? Adopting a role, playing a game unpredictable outcomes perhaps that's why most rpgs use dice i would say this is more of a resource management game and a story game now, these are loaded terms i don't necessarily treat them as as negatives um i just think resource management works better in a sort of survival horror type of setting um and to me, in this game, which is trying to be sort of small-scale Studio Ghibli-style stories of, of heartwarming emotions and, and so on, um, the, the bean counting, I would feel, would, would take me out of this. So it doesn't really feel like a role-playing game in any traditional sense. It's much more of a story game, and it's much more about bean counting. Um, to, in order to play the game yeah you have a difficulty you can pay your stat against the difficulty and then you spend points from a pool to succeed if you want to succeed so there's no real unpredictability the the game part of role playing game is is missing here now if you go in understanding that that's how this works fair enough um otherwise it might be a bit of a nasty surprise. This sort of belongs in the same sort of arena as maybe Doe. Um, I'm hard pressed to think of any others because I'm not so much into this type of game. Um, I much prefer unpredictable outcomes. That said, you could fairly easily convert this um, into something more random but something more traditional using dice. Just control the amount of additional resource you, you hand out or that you can get and maybe use the plus and minus fate dice um, to see whether you score higher than your statistic or lower than your statistic to try and meet the difficulty so I'd have to have a have a much more in-depth look uh, in order to figure out the way to turn it into a randomized system but that's just kind of off the top of my head so you can see very much the sort of Ghibli influence here in terms of the art and presentation though I have to say I'm not a fan of dust jackets and, and slip covers because they tend to get lost or mangled and they feel unnecessary in a world where you can print a hardcover book with the art directly integrated into the hardcover and that's pretty hard wearing and given that these kinds of things are more reference books um, kind of pointless uh, unless you're going to do something useful with it, like put rules recaps or uh, a world map or something on the inside of the dust jacket. So, yeah, um, I mean, it looks nice, but in practical terms, not actually that useful. So it's called heartwarming role-playing. So that kind of gives you an idea. In the game, you are playing Henge Yokai, um, Animal Spirits. It's shortened to Henge throughout the entire book, which unfortunately to me as an English speaker, and especially one from England, I consistently read as Henge and then have to mentally uh, <laughs> shift that the, the way it's meant to be. I think I would have preferred it if they'd used the, the full name for the Japanese animal spirits through it, um, but alas, no. Um, 
So you play one of uh, various kinds of animal spirits. There are foxes, there are raccoon dogs, there are cats, there are dogs, there are rabbits, there are birds. And it would be pretty easy to come up with any other ones, or if you wanted to set in Europe as like helpful household or nature sprites or whatever, it would be relatively easy to come up with things. Um, because it is story focused and you don't need to worry so much about balance, that's, that's what makes it easy to, to kitbash the system such as it is into something else. The book is written with a lot of stories that aren't really examples of play and so act as a kind of guide to the theme and mood of what you want the game to, to be or at least what the author wants the game to be but aren't so useful in figuring out how to play not that it's terribly complicated you have your stat you have a target number if your stat isn't high enough to meet the target number you must spend points from a from a resource in order to get there um, Resources are dreams, wonder and feelings that you get from various kinds of interaction and roleplay. I would say the game doesn't just encourage you to roleplay in certain ways or to roleplay certain stories, but rather it kind of forces you, um, which again kind of t would take me out of it to an extent. Um, it's nice to encourage people to play in a certain style or way, I don't like it so much when it forces you to play. So the main part of the game hinges around these kind of lower parts of the character sheet. It, managing your dreams, managing your wonder, managing your feelings, managing your connections to the other characters, the NPCs, the, the town and the people around you, basically. Um, and in order to do that and to help people out, think really small scale in terms of stories like reuniting a lost pet with its family or helping a young boy overcome his grief or um, yeah, those sorts of things, really small scale kind of stories. Um, but you do that by roleplay, interaction and by using your various Henge powers. Your statistics are Henge, which you use to manipulate your powers, Animal, which you use for anything physical, uh, including fighting, Adult, which is like your, your higher mind interacting with the adult world, Knowledge, Mechanisms, um, Hiding your feelings from others, you, your knowledge, that sort of thing, and Child, which is your innocence and wonder and your emotional manipulation. So yeah, you compare that to a difficulty number and then spend points from your resources to overcome it or don't. So there's no real unpredictability, but um, like I said, it would be relatively easy to turn this into a random, a randomized system, like a more conventional RPG, perhaps using fate dice with the pluses and minuses, but yeah. Um, the different animal types have the different powers. You have a base set of powers. You can add additional powers, up to three of them, but each additional power you add gives you an additional weakness um, like as a fox spirit you might find fried tofu irresistible I mean someone has to I suppose uh, weirdly the raccoon dogs giant testicles aren't mentioned <laughs> anywhere <laughs> which is a uh, yeah which is a bit uh, a bit odd considering the way the tanuki are uh, are presented throughout Japanese mythology but uh, hey there you go um, rabbits are intimately connected with mochi the sweets kind of dessert thing in Japan. Um, so, yeah, that's how, uh, what else can I say about this game? Um, oh, okay, this illustration. Um, yeah, uh, so I think, if I remember correctly, this is translated by the same people that translated Made, which is somewhat controversial for its... Um, naughty element. Now, there's nothing particularly explicit in this game, though the, the cats do have the power of seduction and so on, but it does very much give off big lolly energy. <laughs> um, despite nothing explicit being, being present in the game. 
all the illustrations are of cute little girls, even though you can play cute little boys if you want to, um, or all points in between, let's, let's be inclusive. Um, but yeah, it, it, it does definitely give off that big lolly energy. And that can be a little bit uncomfortable. Now, as far as I'm concerned, drawings are drawings, let your freak flag fly, whatever, but it's not it's not for me. Um, and I found that a little bit off-putting uh, th throughout the book. I um, mean, the applications of the system are all very simple. The presentation's nice. There's a lot more art than in most Japanese RPGs translated or, or otherwise. The powers and so on are, are more interesting. There is a better example of play um, showing how points and things are handed out rationed and used to do things I, I really should hammer home that this is about small scale Ghibli-esque stories for the most part where you'll be interacting with the local gods like nature spirits and so on and humans who live in the village there's guidelines for making your own village there's an example village you know everything's here it's very self-contained um, links were offered to a site that should have additional rules and so on um, but I didn't bother checking it out because I wanted to just review the book as is. I wish you could play the spider girl rather than it just being an NPC but uh, there we go um, you have a, a bestiary of sorts but if you're getting into a fight you've you've already lost in this kind of game really um, unless it's kind of an incidental story beat uh, that doesn't really mean much much of anything. So there isn't really a lot more to say. Um, it's complete within itself. It would lend itself to fairly short sessions, I think, so fairly good for a filler game or for a convention slot, though I think it might be too short even for a three to four hour convention slot you might get in two stories in that time um, especially if you're using pre-generated characters it's it's nice it's cute it's presented well though I think the cover is perhaps the worst art in the in the, in the whole book unfortunately but it's not really a role-playing game it's a it's a resource management story game and those two things are very much in intention. Um, in terms of style, I mean, the, the presentation is nice. There's lots of artwork. It's what you'd expect from a Japanese RPG, I think, in terms of its of its presentation. Though the layout feels more uh, Western, though it's hard to pin down exactly why. In a lot of ways. Perhaps it was relayed out for the for the Western edition. Perhaps more art was commissioned for the Western edition. Whatever the case, I think stylistically it scores quite high. Um, high three, low four. Let's call it a four and be generous because there is a lot more artwork and it does convey the mood and theme a lot better than the other Japanese RPGs that, that I've reviewed recently. But there is that clash between the system and and the stated goal in that all that bean counting just it really does have a have a negative influence in play, I would say. And this isn't a game for people who are much more used to traditional RPGs and hacking the system to achieve certain ends. Um, and in my experience that can leave a lot of a lot of role players who are used to other ways of doing things, it can leave them floundering and not really knowing what to do in the system, not being able to play the odds, not having enough ways to customise their character to reflect what they wanted to do in the world, that sort of thing. It, it can throw people, so a, a low four for style. In terms of substance, I mean, it's complete. It could do with a little bit more, a few more options and so on, but there may be those on the website. Um, a high three in terms of substance. I mean. It's complete but it leaves you wanting a bit more more options more ideas and a lot of the space that was devoted to 
the the stories and the playthroughs that weren't really playthroughs you, you could have used a few of those pages and there are quite a few of them you could have used those to add more material um, and more direct help for games masters and players to get the most out of the game uh, it weighs in at about 150 pages so yeah we'll say substance 3 so 4 out of 5 for style 3 out of 5 for substance 7 out of 10 3.5 out of 5 uh, it's okay I don't know that I'll ever get to play it because it's just not the kind of game uh, that my groups are into uh, maybe if I run it online or something but the bean counting is even more difficult online so, so we'll see it's, uh, it, it's interesting from a designer point of view to see a story game from Japan most of the Japanese games are very much still in that kind of old school dynamic even if they're not old school games so to see a, a story game from Japan that was that was interesting but um, I don't know if the people watching my channel would necessarily be super into a resource management story game so much uh, but if you are more power to you Zang Flick Pig there's no big story to this, even the title's just a way to get away with writing fuck pig. It's not some earth-shaking attempt to thrust upon you the evils of meat-eating. I eat meat, because it's fucking delicious. David Cameron got me thinking about pigs. Then I got into some arguments with vegans. Then I made a horror dungeon game in which you play pigs trying to escape a horrible, fantastical slaughterhouse. That's about it. If that upsets you, do one. A print and play OSR dungeon crawl with pigs. Available at post-mort.com and drive-through RPG.